Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, the often imitated but never replicated uh, syntax news show for your viewing pleasure. Uh, this edition covers the week ending September 17th, 2022. We're going to have a choice selection of headlines for you, as well as two memes of the week. And then another very special cognitive conjecture uh, having to do with colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould. All right. So the first headline comes from The Week. What the conservative Supreme Court spells for America. So we see a couple particles of negation here. S-U-B, I-N-G, S-U-P, and then a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word. What is non-tangible contract pronoun? Nothing can follow a pronoun except for breaking the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. So we have an adverb here, which is pure modification, modifying tangible contract conservative into an adjective, which is coloring supreme into an adjective, coloring court into an adjective, which is coloring spells into tangible contract pronoun. And again, Nothing can follow pronoun except for yada, yada, yada. And we have pure modification, non-tangible contract, adverb for modifying America into a dangling participle verb. Now, the reason why America is a dangling participle verb is because when you go into the, the meaning of what a verb is, all right, the concept of a verb, it's thinking. And we have a verb here, and there's nothing left to think about. So it's just kind of dangling there. That's why it's a dangling participle verb. So, what this headline's conveying, uh, with my opinion, is what's the conservative Supreme Court spells for America? Uh, I don't know, they mean like it's a, they're casting a spell, as in like witchcraft or sorcery? Or, uh, you know, the Supreme Court's going to be more conservative, more reserved in their judgments, instead of liberal? I mean, uh. Or are they actually spelling things? As in when you spell a word. I guess we'll have to find out, right? Next headline. Prince Harry cries during vigil for his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle later filed out of the hall, holding hands, sparking criticism from some. Goodness. The fact that this is even being talked about in the news is just more evidence of what the news actually is. I'm not even going to go through this whole thing. You can see uh, there's just a lot of tangible contract adjectives and pronouns sprinkled in with some adverbs here. You do see a conjunction here where it says Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And uh, what, what's happening there is the conjunction is serving as a bridge in between tangible contract adjectives which are coloring one another there uh, that's what's going on there and we do see some particles of negation the ing the ed and the vowels in front of a consonant at the beginning of the words and uh, just all fictitious conveyance of grammar according to correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar mechanics next headline comes from newsweek it's an adjective pronoun top story Politics, Trump's endorsement, still GOP's golden ticket, despite probes, FBI raved. So that's interesting in a fiction sense that this guy still uh, gathers uh, attention. And so it's, well, I can tell you a story that... Uh, I was traveling through the Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania area, and every road I traveled on, not that was, you know, when I traveled on the back roads and things, there were Trump signs in every yard. There were no uh, Biden signs anywhere, nowhere. And I traveled along not on Interstate 80, but around Interstate 80 through there. And also in Tennessee, when I went to Tennessee and Kentucky. So I, I can see how that would be 
Next headline, Russia threatens U.S. and lays down red line. So, really, what, what we're talking about here is, and, and of course, they're using some, I guess, what they probably think are clever references when they say red line, because red is, uh, you know, communism. Russia threatens U.S. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I hope I don't, you know, violate. I, it's not my intention to violate any guidelines here on this platform. I'm just throwing some, some things out there, you know. How many military bases does that country, starting with an R, have bordering the United States of America? that con the past tense United States country. How many bases does it have? Okay. Now, juxtapose that overseas to Asia. How many military bases does the past tense United States of America have bordering Russia, either on the border or near the border? Now, you tell me, if you're just looking at that from a, you know, looking at a map from an objective standpoint, Where's the threat? Who who seems to be threatening who here? So we got adjective, adjective, U.S., U, period, S, period, I take as one entity, and that's a tangible contract adjective because we know what that is. We're not here to be misunderstood or misunderstand anything. That's what they mean. And then we have uh, and, which is non-tangible contract conjunction, which just to, like in the other headline is functioning as a neutral bridge in between the two adjectives, which culminate in the pronoun down. And then red line is in those dollar store quotations, also known as uh, apostrophes. And so that falls under the four corner rule. It's not on the page. And then as you see the rest, you know, we have by Zoe Strazowski, which is adverb adjective pronoun. And then on is an adverb. That whole date I take as one entire verb followed by adverb. And then the 11 with the colon 06 I take as one entity. It's a tangible contract adjective because those are obviously numbers. And uh, there's no space before or after the colon. So it doesn't function as a break in the continuance of the evidence. It's just another hieroglyph included in that term. And then we have AM, tangible contract, adjective, ending in EDT, which, you know, up here they have U period, S period, which is the fiction way of doing an abbreviation, EDT. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can make a guess, which is what they want you to do. They want you to guess as to what that means. Uh, but we really don't know because there's no closure to it. And that's the whole reason why we bank these syntax values, because there is no closure to uh, any of these words, and it's full of modification. Next headline comes from Time. Green energy and climate devastation rewrite our future. So we got another situation of uh, adjectives and then a conjunction as a bridge between those uh, coloring modifiers culminating in the rewrite pronoun followed by adverb hour and then future which is a dangling participle verb um, it's another interesting fiction headline because how can you rewrite something that hasn't been written yet how can you rewrite which in the fiction sense means write again something that has not yet been written because it's in the future how can it be written it makes no damn sense Next one comes from Zero Hedge. Nothing to do with man. Astrophysicist says climate cultists are on a gravy train to make money. The words in quotations, real quotations this time. I don't uh, syntax because they're not on the page. We have a couple adjectives, a pronoun, and then uh, adverb future tense. Adjective make money pronoun and then by Tyler Durden adverb adjective pronoun Tyler Durden, right? 
I wonder if that's a nom de guerre. So this astrophysicist, whom is not credentialed here, says that, uh, or is claiming that this, the cultists of the climate are uh, making money off of this uh, climate change platform. Makes sense to me. I mean, think about it, folks. What is climate change? Change is modification, right? The climate changes every day, every week, every year. It's nothing new. It's not surprising. There's nothing shocking about that. The climate never stays the same. And over time, over time, over the continuum, it continues to change and go through fluctuations and so on and so forth. So I don't, I don't know what the big deal is here. I really don't. All right, so here's our last headline in our syntax lesson for this week. We're going to go through and look at the particles of negation here. In the main text, we have vowel in front of a consonant there, vowel in front of a consonant there. We have the RE, vowel in front of a consonant, vowel in front of a consonant. SE is a particle of negation when it comes in front of a hard consonant, as C is hard right here. And there's a particle of negation. Now let's go into the syntax. As I teach my beginner students, we will start at the end and work backwards. So I see a non-tangible in and then a tangible contract common. So in is going to be an adverb modifying common into a dangling participle verb. Have is tangible contract pronoun in the past tense. That word there is an adjective. That's an adjective. That's an adjective. That's an adjective. Adjective. This is a conjunction. And this is another one of those adjective scenarios. And we have what? Real pronoun is and evil are both adjectives. And by the way, the answer to this question, evil is real, what do J.P. Sears and U.N. Secretary General Dag have in common? Well, they both have red hair. But also, you see, they draw attention to the book Political Polarology, which is a very good book that I would highly recommend you read. Next up is Meme of the Week. I thought this was pretty funny. If you have a smartphone and you're talking about anything, it's definitely listening to you. It's definitely listening to you and it is communicating your words to these platforms and probably dozens of others. After dealing with Martha's Vineyard HOA, migrants decide to go back and take their chances with the cartels. Um, and this has to do with the story of the migrants being flown from Florida up to Martha's Vineyard and then being transported into a uh, military base. Last but not least, we have the cognitive conjecture. And uh, this one comes from a channel called Law Talk with Mike, which I will be doing a reaction video, a long reaction video to uh, one of his other pieces. But on this one, this one's going to be a little short one. And uh, this has to do with Russell J. Gould. And as you can see here, this is on uh, Russell's channel. And it has the colon, the common mistake of the colon space capture of the flag. And as uh, Russell and David both teach, war negates contract. Capturing anything is an act of war. Because if you look it up, uh, capture uh, implies that you're taking something against its will or against someone else's will. You're capturing it. Something that wasn't given. Let's put it that way. It's something that was captured. So it's an act of war. Keep that in mind. But let's hear what's uh, going on here. And uh, as I moved from that, I, I ran into David Hyperwinkle and Miller. 
Uh, we met the day that changed my life and it changed his life as we sat down and had a wonderful conversation and I started tearing apart sentence structure for him and he started showing me being about prepositional phrases. We'd be yep, just two guys tearing apart sentence structure. <laughs> This is just really interesting to hear from his perspective. I've got a video in, uh, it's either in Quantum Grammar or in Russell J. Gould's thing where where he uh, conducts a court martial on David Wayne Miller. So, you know, and he sort of addresses that here too. He says th things go bad between them. You just became really good friends. It's interesting that, uh, the as, as he's saying, the, the way that Russell paints the picture which is not the impression I got at all, and that Russell never ever described it that way while David was alive. Because the way I see it, and the way you, the viewer, can see it, if you go back and look at those videos of Russell and David doing seminars, it's very clear who's in charge. Anytime David speaks, Russell shuts up. Even when Russell would do solo seminars, he would defer to Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. He would defer to him and say, oh, well, David told me not to talk about that. And so it was very clear that uh, Russell was the student and uh, David was the teacher or the master. And then when David passes away, then uh, along with a lot of other things, uh, the story got modified. And we, I lived with him, he lived with me, we'd go fishing, and I was very thankful to run into David. And we, we became, you know, business partners, and we became really good friends, and it was a love-hate relationship in the end. Okay, this is what wrote me in. I, I had this come across my feed, and it's, it's pretty uh, interesting. So he has, a, he has a th uh, some event, and there are a bunch of people here. And uh, tell me in the comments below. I it looks it looks put on to me in the sense that it's either friends or they're or he's paying them or something because everything looks sort of uh, coordinated and too cute by half. But uh, nonetheless, even even if he can manage to either pay or or draw friends into a room and and pretend to be behind this, uh, or or he's actually got real people who listen to this nonsense and, and think there's some value to it. I, I don't know. I'm blown away. You tell me. And he gave me all this knowledge out of the kindness of his heart. Well, it certainly wasn't uh, only out of the kindness of his heart. I do know the amount per person that is charged for a seminar like that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, although Russell has claimed that he can create gold and things like that. I mean, obviously you can't pay for a... Uh, Mountain Dew in a Snickers bar down at the 7-Eleven with gold, so you have to have fiat currency. So when he does his seminars, you know, uh, he accepts uh, donations and he has a Patreon as well. The claim that, that Russell's making about capturing the flag were negates contract. And also, if you're going to claim authority over grammar, meaning authority comes from being author, then that has to be correct by the rules of said grammar. And I have yet to see one contract that has correct grammar on it from him. Now I know that there are allowances for typos. Everybody makes errors, typos, missing punctuation. But when you see an error that is repeatedly made over and over and over and over and over again, like the colon, space, and then uh, the word at the beginning of a sentence, then that either, it's, it can be one of two things. It's either the individual doesn't know the grammar and doesn't have closure on it, or they're doing it on purpose. It, it can't be any other way. And I do give closure on the colon mechanics in multiple videos on my YouTube channel. You can check it out. Uh, the most viewed one, I think, is called For the Study of the Full Colon. And you can uh, look that up on YouTube. And so, he has all these people right here. And I'm sure, matter of fact, I'm positive that some of those people in that video right there are watching this video right now. And I challenge you 
I challenge you to share your closure on the grammar in the comments. Give us a correct sentence structure in the comments of this video. Share your knowledge that you learned from that man. And uh, we'll see how it holds up. I mean, I don't know. Russell's claim to have done a lot of things that I don't necessarily have proof of. Uh, but one thing I can claim is that my grammar mechanics are sound. And there are over 400 videos on this YouTube channel to back that up. I don't know if uh, he has over 400 videos that he's created of correct sentence structure. As a matter of fact, I don't think he's created one video since 20... 15 that has anything to do with grammar he mostly just talks about stuff and cuts promos and things like that but that's your cognitive conjecture the point of the cognitive conjecture was the flag where you have the they claim to capture the flag and then they also say that war negates contract capture is an act of war so by logic, that means that whatever f contract they have that they created through the capture of a flag is null and void because war negates contract. Simple. I would like to uh, give the last minutes of this video over to talking about the man you see on your screen there, Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller. He was born on this day, September 17th, 1949. And uh, if he hadn't done what he had done, and I hadn't seen him on YouTube doing what he does, then I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. There's no doubt about it. Um, he brought this technology to the public. And, um, you know, nobody would be doing what they're doing in this field without him. No matter what you think of them. You know, colon, Mark, lowercase k, Kishon. Colin Christopher wouldn't be doing what he's doing. Wouldn't be making the money he's making. Colon Space, Russell hyphen J, Colon Space, Gould wouldn't be doing what he's doing if it weren't, if he hadn't met this man. And so on and so forth down the line. So I think we all owe a debt of uh, gratitude to the man for coming into the earth. I mean, onto the earth and, uh, Doing what he did, sharing what he shared. So happy birthday, David. So that wraps it up for this week's edition of For the Now Space News. Oh, as always, if you're interested in learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, parsing, syntax, grammar, you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and uh, apply for a correct grammar workshop. I do teach classes. I've been teaching them to hundreds of people for the last five years. I've got a pretty good track record, if I do say so myself. You can also study the 400, you know, over 400 videos on my YouTube channel uh, that contain the sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge. You can also uh, join the membership there. There are two tiers. Uh, you can check those out. Just click the join button and you'll, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week. Salute.